Part of single leg stance is really being able to find your glutes and use those to create that axis and extension. So you've seen me do it with that upper body engagement, but there's a really obvious lower body engagement and we don't use it enough. Now, first off, I'm gonna talk about bridging because that usually is the default to people who are trying to find their glutes for the first time. So just bridge up for me, Danielle. There's a lot of substitution you can make here. You can do a lot of this with your quads. You can do a lot of this with your low back. Go back down. So a long time ago, I wanted to look at people bridge in a single position, which flexes one hip. Bring it on up and back down. We can really see how tight that hip flexor is. And if you're truly getting extension, switch sides. Because we would have people on one side not be able to go as high. We just found a true hip flexor problem. Now, a long time ago, Mike Boyle called this a cook hip lift. I just call it a single leg bridge. But there's something even better, especially if we're pursuing single leg stance and we know that the glutes aren't engaged. So, Daniel, put both legs down. Now, under this leg, I'm going to see if you can bridge so high that your heel and your butt come up on this side. Nice job. Now, if you can do it on this size of a roll, and if she couldn't, then we would start with a little bit bigger roll. But since she can, I'm going to make it even more challenging. Okay, and back down. Now, I need butt and hip to both come up on that side. Nice job, and back down. Do that again. Now, part of what you're doing is having to stiffen your whole body to do this. So if you're just using this hip, you should be able to do this for me, which is bring this leg up and across and roll all the way to your stomach, bring your arm around, and then turn around and roll all the way back. The only trick here is do not lose that bridge. So now you don't have much room to bridge, but there's a lot of extension going on. It really does light up that axis. So when you bridge, butt and heel gotta be up, roll across with your leg, but don't go back until butt and heel are both up. Good job. And really elongate and take it back. Good. Do two more of those and see if a breathing sequence helps you there. We will either inhale or exhale coming to, but just try it both ways and see if one is more helpful than the other. Don't forget that bridge. Good. This is extremely difficult to do because we're working that last few degrees of extension. Move to this side of the table just so we can take a left-right comparison. But this is low-tech equipment and it's a, it's a very high degree of proprioceptive awareness because for people regaining balance, it's very easy to stiffen unnecessary parts of the body while you're trying to have an axis and that's counterproductive to balance. So we're only staying stiff where we need to. We're staying fluid and flexible everywhere else. Use your breath to help you do it. But go ahead and try that roll. I'll pick that heel up. There you go. <laughs> All right, control the motion now. You should be able to bridge and move smooth at the same time. Bridge and bring that leg across. Good. And then take that leg back across, bridge. Now, you're holding your breath both ways, so I'm gonna give you one more chance to do a breath sequence. Let's do breathing out on the way over, breathing in on the way back. A Little better, we can reverse that. Breathe in on the way over, out on the way back. Did you like that last one best? Or was that, okay. Then that's the way I want you guys to coach this. This is hard enough as it is. And on the side where it's most difficult, don't be surprised if they hold their breath, but don't coach them by saying, don't hold your breath. If she's inhaling or exhaling, she can't hold her breath. And we're gonna find one of those is very complimentary or actually makes it easier. And so the, for the first time, right here, we get a teaching moment connecting once again, breath to stability. It'll start happening automatically. And she won't necessarily use the breath hold as much as she simply won't hold her breath 
while she's doing it. So we're breaking a bad pattern because you'd be surprised how many people who fail a movement screen or a self-movement screen or a movement assessment don't rotate, balance, or squat well because they immediately go in to an unproductive breath hold when they start confronting an area where their body's disorganized. So you wind up asking yourself the question, am I disorganized because I'm breathing wrong or am I breathing wrong because I'm disorganized? You can't answer that question until you start adding breath to movement and you start seeing which one was the big problem, but we blend them both together. Remember, yoga and martial arts never separated breath and movement. It took a Western exercise to do that. Let's reinstall it and put it back together and watch stuff go smoother.